Welcome everybody to the Pixel Logic ZBrush live stream. My name is Ben. I go by Folygon around here, and today I'm going to be spending a couple hours with you guys here in ZBrush doing some sculpting. Uh, specifically, we're going to be sculpting a couple hands, a couple hands that I found from Johannes Helgeson, which. Uh, for those interested in Johannes, wherever our internet browser is, we can look up the spelling of that really quick. Helgeson? Yes, there he is. Johannes Helgeson. So definitely check out Johannes Helgeson. He's got some really cool stuff going on uh, with his work, specifically some really great hands, which we're going to be working on here shortly. Uh, if you guys want to check out more of my stuff, of course, you can check out my YouTube channel. I am just Folygon, uh, pretty much everywhere on the whole world wide web, as they call it. <laughs> uh, you guys can check out my Gumroad if you want some of my courses, brushes, materials, etc., etc. And then my big course, the Appeal Academy, is just appeal.academy. If you guys want to check that out and learn more about my personal mentorship slash course program, that's all on there for you guys. If you are joining us in chat, which I should pull up here so I can see who is here with us, uh, shout out maybe uh, where you're watching from. That's always fun, right? Uh, and if you guys have any questions while we're going here, feel free to put those in the chat as well. All right, we got Matt Demian Demianoa, maybe I'm horrible with names, so I'm not even actually going to try that anymore, but welcome, welcome everybody. Everybody can hear me, cool, from San Diego, awesome, welcome. All right, let's go ahead and get started on some hands. I'm hoping, we have a couple hours here, I'll have to keep an eye on the clock, that I can at least do a couple of these. I think I'm going to start off with that hand in the bottom or I'm sorry, bottom, top left hand corner. So we're gonna go ahead and start there. I'm going to break symmetry very soon. That music sounds a little bit too loud to me. Hopefully that's not too loud for you guys. Pop Sky, by the way, is who our music is today for the whole stream. Love me some good Pop Sky. Got some cool chip tuney type stuff, some really cool sounds. All right. So like I said, top left hand is what we're going to be focusing on. I could have probably, maybe, let's see, I got an idea. Paint, and I think I need to swap my color to black. It's been a while. Give me that. Where'd our paint go? Maybe I have to keep that on there. Let's make our brush a little smaller. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to single out that top left hand and hopefully get rid of most of this. If you just use the paintbrush with the spotlight tool, which is what this is, maybe it looks a little black magic-y, but if you use a black paintbrush, there you can uh, get rid of all of that. Oh, oh, twist, spin, come on, go away. Oh no, what have I done? Now I've just ruined it. <laughs> well, I thought I had it, Let's undo a couple times. There we go. I don't know what I did, but now it's working. All right, let's scale that up. And now we have just our single hand with a little extra junk at the top. There we go, oh, beautiful. I could have done this way before I started streaming, but you know what? We've got it working now. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna turn off symmetry pretty quick on this, like I said, and continue sculpting. Uh, welcome from Australia. You are watching from pretty far away. I don't know what time it is in Australia right now. Augustus, what's going on, dude? How you doing? We are just getting started on a couple hands here. And we're going to try working a little quick, especially in the beginning, so we can get something on our canvas, get something going. Now typically when I sculpt hands, what I like to do is just do one finger at a time. So let's, um, we'll just plop in a, plop it in a something down here. Let's go with a sphere for now. Actually, let's go with a cube. Nice, perfect cube as I call it. And I will be using that to create my finger. So these three fingers are very similar. 
So I will be representing them with just one finger and then I'll duplicate that finger multiple times later on. Let me just do a quick rotation or two. Jeez, there we go. Lengthen that out. And cheat with our slice curve brush to do a couple edge loops through here real quick. And we'll figure out the place for that here. Proportionally, a little bit too thick, but more so than anything, we just want something on the canvas. And then we can edit this as we go. I see so many people, you know, work really slow in the beginning, and I am definitely one of those people. But uh, you can work a lot faster just by, you know, not worrying so much in the beginning stages. Just kind of go through as quick as you can. We're actually going to put all three of these fingers in here, plus the index finger that we can't see, assuming that there is one. I would hope that there is. Uh, we're just going to get those in place, and then we'll work a little bit more on one of the other fingers here a bit later. And then we'll go from there. Let's do an auto groups. And I have a bunch of custom stuff here in ZBrush, so if I do something a little too quick, or if you guys just have some questions about my process or anything else, feel free to shout it out in chat and I'll do my best to elaborate on that. And we're getting somewhere. We're getting some fingies in place. Now this index finger is not seen, so I think what I'm going to do is uh, group it with the middle finger. So uh, from our profile over here, it will not be seen, but uh, it will definitely be there. I'm going to need that finger. All right, uh, let's do our wrist next. We'll just insert a quick little cylinder up here. Get all the basic stuff in position. Swap our brush. There we go. And get that up there. Um, Randy says, stream notices are always like 15 to 30 minutes late. I don't have any control of the stream notices. Uh, I would maybe ask somebody <laughs> from the Pixelogic team. I, I'll mention that to them. I, uh, this is not my channel. I am just, I'm just here for, for fun, giving away my valuable time for free. <laughs> I'm so humble. Um, here, this is not my channel. This is the Pixelogic ZBrush channel, the creators of the software that I am using. I'm just here, you know, offering up some time to hang out and do some sculpting and maybe answer some questions along the way. But I will mention that to them, that the uh, notifications are a little delayed. Although I'm not sure if that's something that they have any control over either. That might just be on the Twitch side, but I will I will ask and find out for you. Uh, let's see. Um, got your stylized head course. Awesome. Uh, I want to ask, is that how you start most of your characters? Yes, it is. It is how I start almost everything through this blockout process. It's actually the process that I'm doing right now, using primitive shapes to block out a form. So we are doing a little bit of that right now, making sure that we have the hand in place. We're going to be doing some more stuff here shortly to kind of push this even more. Going to need the fat pad and just overall form for the, uh, the thumb. We also need to get some more curve in here for our palm. The palm is not something that is perfectly flat. It's got some, you know, some roundness to it around, around there. Uh, we will also need to really capture that silhouette for that straight edge coming down. As you can see right now, ours is angled out this way. It needs to be angled this way. So that is definitely something that we will do here. So we'll just push that in. Adjust some more shapes here. We'll combine some stuff here shortly. Oh, lost a little bit of form down here. Let's get some more fat pad of the thumb in place. Take a look inside a book. A little more there. Quick little remesh. All right, we're starting to get somewhere. 
Uh, I just watched your video on Blockout. Love your work. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Glad the uh, video was helpful there for you. Yes, Blockout is very important. And I feel like a lot of people get stuck in this idea of, you know, I'm learning how to sculpt for the first time and everybody says, uh, just learn anatomy. And it's like, well, what does that even mean? And, uh, it turns out that, you know, anatomy is helpful, but at the end of the day, everything is just shapes. And if you can create what you see, you're good to go. Blockout is also just another word for primary form, uh, the most simple shape that you can uh, you can see there. So that's that's how it's done. It's like doing the line art for a drawing. You have to start with that rough sketch first. Same idea here with block out. You have to get those big shapes first. I'm looking at a couple things here. And I want to make sure that I get these right. Let me focus for five seconds. Do a quick little pinch. All right. So the thumb is actually pushing back and in. Here's your palm. This is what this thumb is doing. So because of that, there actually won't be as much of a volume here, we'll be more so pushing back that direction, like so. And then we get the thumb coming down from there. I will just uh, duplicate one of my fingers and throw that up over there real quick. And then obviously the thumb, that joint, that extra joint that you have, isn't so much a part of your thumb, is it more so kind of goes back here more towards your wrist, so really it's something kind of like that. But that's all up inside of your palm, inside that fat pad. Let's make sure we get this angle here correct. Coming down. I was thinking initially, I was looking at this right before I started the stream, and I was thinking that this was on a flat surface, but the more I look at it here, I think this is more just floating in space. I was taking my hand and like putting it on my table and my thumb just wasn't reaching the table like this hand was. <laughs> uh, I think that thumb is just a, a little bit maybe either foreshortened in space or uh, we got some other funkiness going on there that we'll have to figure out a bit later. All right, let's see. We're getting a little messy. That's okay though. It's okay to be messy in the beginning. Um, why music so loud? Is music so loud? If anybody else is thinking this music is so loud. Oh, no, somebody else says I can hardly hear it. Awesome, great. <laughs> Someone else finds the music relaxing. Apparently you all are talking about the music. <laughs> Glad I can bring the great content. <laughs> Pop Sky, by the way. Pop Sky, one word, two Y's. Love your work and I follow your YouTube channel like a disciple. Well, thank you, Augustus. I'm glad to have you here. Yes. Um, music's just fine. Awesome. Cool, guys. Well, I'm glad we figured that out very quickly. <laughs> Let's combine our uh, wrist with our hand. We'll just merge these together, run another Dynamesh, do a pinch. I am trying to pinch for that very sharp plane change up top, which is already getting into position. Trim brush on top, plane out. Let me get that. Take a look. Looking at that line flowing in. Probably have just a little too much volume here, as well as there for the thumb connection. Actually, quite a bit too much. Let's see, let's get in here just a little bit with some pinch. See if we can clean that up. All right, so we got the side plane right here. Coming out this way. Let's see, just plane out a little bit more. 
Make sure we got things where we want them. And I think we're relatively close. But relatively close, if you guys know me, is not typically good enough. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's, um, what I'm going to do is split off this one finger and then I'm going to focus on uh, sculpting that one finger. The other fingers will just be placeholders and I will, uh, I will work on those as a duplicate. So what we'll do is just hide those for now and just flip ourselves an upside down bird and start moving this middle finger into position. Take a, take a look at that curve. All right, so based on what I can see, it looks like these fingers actually uh, thicken up as they go down. So they go from thin to thick a little bit, or maybe just a little bit thicker along the knuckles. Let's experiment with that. I've done that before in hands, and I'm not typically a huge fan of going from thin to thick towards the outside, towards the tip. Let's get that sharp transition on top. I might actually, here, let's do this. We'll turn on local symmetry while we're sculpting. And what that will do is let us work on this as if it were along the symmetrical axis. I use local symmetry all the time. Very, very nice tool there. All right. Coming up through here, we have the knuckle. Roughly there. Get the next little pull out. And we'll just sharpen these up really quick. Nice and tight. Get those headed in the right direction there. Maybe run a quick Dynamesh. Maybe a little too low. All right. It's starting to work. All right, let's uh, let's get a little bit more roundness in the palm. And I'm going to do a quick remesh to this hand in just a moment. Make that easier to work on for me. We'll take a look at that thumb in a moment. Let's stick with what we've got. So in ZBrush 2020, there's a lot of awesome new tools, one of which is called History Recall. I actually don't use the History Recall brush set all that often. I don't typically do a lot of repetitive textures that would require uh, the History Recall brushes or the specifically the extractor brush. Specifically what I do with History Recall here is I use it with projection so that I can subdivide and project my model to back to the form that I had previously while um, still, uh, but while then uh, getting the benefit of getting some subdivision levels and having all that form all the same, and then I can step up and down through my subdivs. For those that have been using ZBrush and sculpting in general for a while, then, you know, projection is not anything new, but uh, we've just made it quite a bit easier here with history recall in 2020. Probably going to need a little more thickness down by the fingers. And yeah, probably probably a little bit more, honestly, looking at that now. Let me check on our music, see what happened. Well, it came back. Yes, got to work fast. Got to work fast in the beginning. Definitely, Gerald. I blinked once and you're... Yeah, <laughs> got to pay attention, of course. Luckily, all these streams are um, recorded and they will be posted later or uploaded later on the Pixelogic YouTube channel. So if you guys follow them there or do not follow them there, check it out and look forward to that. 
Um, didn't know you stream for the Pixel for Pixel Logic 2. I do. I just have not done it in a, in a while. All of my past streams are on the Pixel Logic YouTube channel. Uh, you guys can find all of them on there. They're, they keep them all uploaded and everything. I <laughs> See, I forgot. I forgot this was a thing with my old streams, but all the puns. I do not miss the puns. I got to hand it to you. Very clever. Very clever. This this is an insta ban, by the way, <laughs> for puns. Um Looking good already. Well, thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right, let's get back to our finger. All right, so we got the basic shape there. I think this fingertip is going to be a bit more Volume on the bottom, I'm looking at these fingers for what I can see. I can't see that middle finger, but the other ones are a pretty similar shape. I'm going to overextend that, and then I'm going to flatten it. And start to soften that form just a, just a little bit through there. But kind of still keep that flat, pressured feel. So almost like it is pressed against a surface. I'm going to round it a little more. And we will probably do a fingernail before we duplicate that finger too. Just so we don't have to create multiple fingernails. How are we doing on time? We're only 15 minutes in. We got plenty of time here then. All right, I think what I'll do... I'm going to sharpen up this finger just a little bit more and then we'll go ahead and do the fingernail and a couple other things. Top plane is going to be a bit sharper. Bottom plane I keep nice and rounded. Creates a really nice contrast. And getting some nice shapes there. All right, let's remesh this finger. I'm adding in just a couple slices so that when I Z remesh this with keep groups, <clears throat> we will get a nicer shape. Z remeshing that as low as we possibly can. Look at that. Nice and clean geo. Beautiful. A couple tricks here with the Z modeler brush. Turn on bevel. Do a small bevel like so. And then you get a nice tight form through there. I'm going to do this at the starting point and ending points for that shape too. So those become just a little sharper through there. Nice, clean, not even subdivision levels, just dynamic, dynamic subdivs, which is kind of like a uh, smooth modifier from Maya, if you're, if you're familiar with those. I, actually, they're in a lot of programs. Whoops. Let's turn our symmetry back on. And now let's sculpt a fingernail. A little too, maybe a little too thin. All right, so for the fingernail, um, you know, I could just sculpt this on here. I could maybe try a very quick poly model. Boop. Hey, that actually worked pretty well. Uh, so let's stick with that. I'll just do a quick little Q mesh with the Z modeler brush. That looks like a pretty good shape. All these fingernails are inset in the tops of the fingers, kind of like mine. I keep my fingernails really short. No whites. Sounded a little racial. No whites. Wait, <laughs> I'm white. <laughs> All right, let's put a fingernail in here. Uh, the way I'm going to do this, very easy, actually. I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to use the geometry that's already there. I'm going to duplicate my finger and just control shift click that poly group. So there we go, I got my fingernail. And then with the Z modeler brush, I can just do an extrude of all polygons. Boop. And there we go, we got a fingernail. Check it. 
Uh, boom. So we got that, we got the fingernail. Hey, we're moving quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. We will pull that up under the base there. Hmm. You know what? I think what we'll do is make the uh, back side of this nail bed a little bit more extreme. We'll take a minute to uh, do a little refinement slash polish through this area. Make this more exaggerated. And then up towards the base of the, or not the base, sorry, but the tip of the finger, we will uh, kind of fade that out a little. So it'll be a lot tighter and more deep back here. I'm gonna pull this out even more. Try to really exaggerate that shape. I'm trying to tuck that up underneath so that when I smooth it, it's more obvious. Let's see it with the fingernail. And we have a couple edge loops going on here that are really close. They're very tight next to each other. I'm gonna try softening those so I can round that finger a little bit more. That worked pretty well. Just did a quick swipe with the smooth brush, smooth alternative actually, if you guys are familiar with that algorithm. Hold shift, let go of shift, keep smoothing. It's pretty easy to do. All right, I think I like it. I think I like that fingernail quite a bit. If anything, I'd maybe, maybe square it off a bit more. It's kind of hard to tell. Those kind of seem a bit more squared though. I can't, I can't see them super well, but looking at that thumb, that thumb is kind of squared off a bit more. So maybe we could square the finger. I don't know, lots of room for experimentation, but I'm pretty happy with that. So I think we'll move on. We have a finger and a fingernail. We can now duplicate said finger by control clicking and dragging with the 3D gizmo or transpose line. Move this down, get that in line, do some scaling. Uh, let me separate this into a new subtool. Just trying to get that to be a little bit more accurate. <clears throat> There's a little bit more curb there as well. Looking at that back portion there. These are gonna fan out a little bit too. Let's see, uh, where are your custom brushes? Uh, you can find them on gumroad.com slash Folygon, uh, where you can find all my brushes, uh, as well as some other stuff like my materials, brushes, courses, I already said brushes, there's other brushes, there's a lot of brushes, all sorts of goodies on there, gumroad.com slash Folygon. When did you join the Pixelogic live stream team? I joined the Pixelogic stream team like over a year ago, I think. Maybe, maybe a lot more than that. <laughs> uh, a while, it has been a while. Uh, but I don't stream very often. I haven't streamed too much this year. I've been focusing on uh, a lot of other work. Been very busy in that regard, uh, but yeah. I love streaming here and hanging out with you guys live. I just don't always have a lot of time for it. But I do today, which is why I'm here. So I hope you guys are having a great day. Staying safe and healthy out there. Um, uh, yes, my brushes are all custom here. Uh, minus, I use like the Damien standard brush. Um, Mech cut brushes are a lot of fun. There's a lot of variations on those. 
I really like the clay buildup brush in ZBrush, the default clay buildup. I wouldn't recommend it though for most people unless you're just, unless you're a little bit more, unless you know what you're doing, we'll say that. Uh, it's hard to control if you're new to sculpting, uh, but it's a great tool for wa uh, working very quick if you do know what you're doing. So, you know, there's a lot of room there for um, speeding up your workflow. This one, this one's a bit more straight. So let's uh, straighten that out. I'm just doing all this with the move brush. All right, and then like I said, that index finger is just going to be right behind the middle, kind of covered up from the profile. I'll, uh, I'll change the rotation here a bit, but pretty much unseen. Hopefully, fingers crossed, ha ha ha. I can make puns too. So there we go, not really seen from the profile. I'll slide that back a little bit. I want to get more uh, depth in the hand. So make sure you're looking at your stuff from multiple uh, angles. It's always very important. Top down, bottom up, etc. Kind of like what I just did there. Really get a sense for your shape. All right, let's continue on to the, uh, to the thumb. So there you go, a great way to work for sculpting fingers, guys. If you are new to sculpting, just make one finger and then duplicate it and repurpose it. And then you uh, can save a lot of time. Um, I did make the nail into a different subtool initially and then I split it off. It's still a separate, separate polygon island, which means that it is still separate, like here. So I can still split it off. It's still a separate object or polygon island, but it's a, uh, it's all in one subtool. It doesn't really matter. I'll probably split them off later though. Like once I combine the fingers with the base of the hand, the palm, I will definitely split off the fingernails. All right, this thumb is a bit strange. What do we got going on here? By the way, if I miss something that you guys say in chat, uh, I'm sorry, it's going by pretty quick and I can't read everything that's that fast. My, my reading level is that of like a first grader. That's not actually true. But uh, if I miss what you say, just type it in chat again. I promise I'm not ignoring you. Mm -hmm. Just brought your just bought your brushes. They are awesome. Thank you, man. Did you just laugh like Shane Olson? Oh no, did I? I don't know how Shane laughs. How does Shane laugh? Is it like a, <laughs> or a, I kind of laugh like that a lot. An old man laugh. Yeah, that's right, Shane. I'm calling you out. <laughs> um, subscribe to your channel. Awesome. Thanks, man. Uh, I do use the 3D gizmo. I mostly use the transpose line. The uh, transpose line, in my opinion, has a lot more powerful, quick things that it can do. But I only, I pretty much only use the 3D gizmo <clears throat> when I am uh, using some of the, uh, what are they called, the modifiers? Deformers. Are these called deformers? I'm blanking. I believe they're called deformers. Whenever I use those. Obviously because the 3D gizmo is the only place you can access those. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty much the only time I use the gizmo. I just like the transpose line a lot. There's a lot of uh, really cool stuff with the transpose line. If you don't know about it, I have a great video on my YouTube channel talking about all the cool secret functions that are available in it. Uh, not really secret, they are all documented, but who has time to read the documentation? Apparently I do. Uh, and they're just kind of little things that I've picked up over, you know, using ZBrush for a very long time.
All right, so we're starting to head in that direction. There's a few things that we need to do to get closer though. This thumb feels pretty long to me. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Got some angles we need to fix. Let's, um, hmm, how do I want to do this? I need to shift this back quite a bit without moving that. So let's grab like that chunk-ish. Something like that. We're in the right direction. It's not it's not quite there then yet. I'm gonna remesh my finger to make it easier to move around. Yes, why read the manual? <laughs> Apparently the Maya, Maya one is thicker than a Bible. I believe it. Yes, yes, we're sculpting some hands tonight. At least one hand. We're on track to maybe do a second one now. That or we might just refine this one a bit more. Let's see, so we come up, delete you, get rid of you, get rid of you. Just getting rid of unnecessary edge loops. So that comes down a lot thicker, that goes in. Out. And then this uh, goes that way. Like I said, a bit of a strange shaped thumb. It's also uh, turned a bit towards us because we can see the bottom side of said thumb. Maybe a bit shorter, probably a bit thicker. And we will merge that together here with some of these other shapes in just a moment. Hmm, I'd like to get a little bit of that overlap happening there. I think that'll be easier to do once I merge it all together. Let me look at this one more time, see if we can understand. See if we can big brain this. Hmm, it's like a strange, skin fold. I think it's just pressed up against the palm there, coming in. I'm doing this with my own hand, thinking about it, <laughs> at least trying to. All right, let's go ahead and merge this uh, together. Get that thumb there. All right, so I need to uh, make sure that this shape holds. So I'll do the same thing I did with the beveled edge loops previously. Something like that. Let's make sure that the shape actually looks good from this angle as well. A little strong there in the curve. We can maybe play with that. 
and we'll work on blending all of that together here in a moment as soon as we merge. Get our music back online. Throw your hands in the air like you just don't care. Yeah. Throwback. Having such a rough time with hands. Thank you. Yeah, of course, man. Got a sculptor expert. Um, alternative smooth is when you smooth with the shift key, uh, which is the default, and then you let go of the shift key and keep smoothing. Sanjay, what's going on? Welcome. All right. Let's go ahead and merge that together. Line in a couple sub divs. Throw that up. Oh, you know what? We are going to want fingernail for our thumb as well, aren't we? Don't want to forget about that. Let's grab one of those fingernails. Just run an auto groups there. Duplicate our finger. Grab our fingernail. And we'll slide this up to the thumb. And then make the necessary changes to get that fitting nice and neat up there. Save us some extra work and not have to make a new nail for our thumb. All right, so a little messy up through here. That'll take, uh, we'll take some time to clean that up in just a moment. Let's go ahead and merge this with the thumb. So we'll do a merge down, got all that together. Beautiful. All right, let's just do a 300 or so at Dynamesh. See what that looks like. Looks pretty good to me. And then we'll just clean this up. We'll blend between this area. You know what? That might be where we can get some of that extra, extra skin fold. Kind of like in the shape in profile though. Getting some nice, interesting plane changes. And just focusing on fundamentals for obviously the side that we can't see. Trying to utilize a lot of the shape language that we have in our fingers over on that side of the thumb. Try to get a sharper plane transition up top. Pretty much just a one to you know, almost a 90 degree turn. A little bit more of that, I think. Luca, what's going on? Welcome. All right, we'll do a quick remesh here. We'll catch up on chat. And I might, hmm. Should we connect up those fingers now? I think we should. We'll do that really quick. Let's run in auto groups. And I don't remember who was asking about the fingernails, but here you go. We're going to split those off so we got the fingers and the fingernails as separate subtools. That is what we want. Make sure this is lined up with our palm just a little bit better. Starting to get a little concave. We'll correct that here in just a moment though. Oh, let's make sure that that fits for the index. And a little bit of a downward sloped angle, kind of like so. 
which is the opposite of what we would expect traditionally, I think. I'm going to go with my gut on this one, and we'll make that work. And then we can combine up our fingers. We got all our fingernails. Beautiful. All right. Subdivide a few times just to get some extra form in there. And then with our palm, let's make sure that we can see those knuckles. If not, I will have to do a little bit of a pull forward. You know what? We're going to hold off. Ah, I kind of just want to merge that thumb by itself for right now. But you know what? We're trying to work a little quickly here. So we'll say screw it. Let's merge them. Make sure we have a decent enough gap there for our fingers. This is all stuff that we can change later. Whoops. Did not mean to merge that with our fingernails. There we go. Alright, quick little Dynamesh. I'll up the resolution slightly. And we'll do a little bit of blending here. Just a little. All right, it's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and remesh it. If anything, I'll create some poly groups around here and use that to our advantage. Let's just see what we get default and see if we can get something decent enough through there. I'll do a 5K Z remesh. Uh, hello, everybody. If you are just joining us, we are doing some hand sculpting from some concepts from Johannes Helgeson. My name is Ben. I go by Folygon around here. If you guys want to check out more of my stuff, youtube.com slash Folygon, where you can find links to stuff like my courses, brushes, etc. Or if you want a direct link to that, it's just gumroad.com slash Folygon, which you can find all of my stuff there, like my brushes, etc., etc. Uh, 7 a.m. here. That does not sound like a good time to watch a stream, but maybe it is. Maybe it is for you. I don't think I would be watching a sculpting stream at 7 a.m. personally, but all the more power to you. What's going on? Welcome, welcome. This is not an easy, easy hand. No, no, it is not an easy hand pose, but it is a fun hand pose. That is for sure. Is that the thing from Adam's uh, family? I think its name actually is The Thing, is it not? I believe it is. That's funny. Uh, I guess. I guess so. It is just a hand. Uh, no, we are working on... Uh, we got some other hands. I've kind of erased most of them, but we'll be doing some more, or at least one more here, uh, here soon. If we can focus up and get back to work on this hand, we'll do a couple more. I'm going to work on uh, the connective area here just a little bit. And then just do a quick uh, general cleanup pass on the rest of this. Make sure things are looking good. Um, thank you, M Patron, for the links. I appreciate that. It's hard for me to stop for a moment and post a bunch of links. Uh, I do most of, I, I do pretty much everything here with poly paint, uh, which we can do right now. This is a, you know, pretty easy, quick little fill in. Get that base color. Do some quick low level poly paint. You want to be rough with this stuff at first. Get that on there. 
Already we're heading in a decent direction. So side plane of the fingers, a little bit more yellowish. Top plane specifically around the knuckles. Seems to be a bit of a darker a burnt sienna. I have no idea what burnt sienna actually is. I just know it's a color that painters use from probably Bob Ross and a couple painting books that I've read. Let's uh, get the bottom here for these fingies. A little bit of hand-painted shadows. Never hurt anybody. That's not true. They actually do. Got to be careful with hand-painting shadows. Very easy to overdo, that sort of thing. Uh, all right, we'll get a couple more little areas here. A little more work. Whoops. I'm just sampling some quick colors. Polypaint's nice. It can be very helpful for helping to see proportion. Typically when I'm sculpting in the beginning though, I just focus on form and don't really worry about polypaint. All right. Not liking that fingernail color. We'll do something a bit closer to there. And we're getting there. We got, you know, the basics here. There's definitely a lot of room for refinement though. Uh, so we could sit here and refine this. And I think we will for maybe like five or 10 more minutes. And if you guys have any questions, we can take some time to answer some questions right now. And then we'll start on a new hand. We'll just kind of clean this up for a few more minutes, like I said, and then move on to another. Just a little bit of some refinement. Should we put light to get the same effect as the base color? Well, if you're trying to go for, you know, pixel perfect accuracy, I would say, you know, you wanna hand paint all those lights and shadows. Uh, but if you are just going, you know, you're, you're trying to sculpt this hand and get the paint to be pretty similar, I would let your lighting in your rendering engine do most of that work. I wouldn't, I, I would be very careful with hand painting too much. It's very easy to overpaint uh, shadows. They get out of control pretty quick. And then they start looking all, all nasty. We don't want that. All right, as a final thing here, we'll probably move these fingers a bit closer together. And I will do that in Transpose Master. And we might clean up some more poly paint or something, but really I don't, I don't really care about the poly paint too much. Uh, where is the best place to interact with you nowadays? Do you still stream on YouTube? It is a big surprise to see you here again. Uh, well, hey, welcome back. Uh, if you guys wanna, <clears throat> Excuse me, if you guys don't see me around too often, I do have a YouTube channel where I upload pretty frequently, <laughs> frequently, uh, just Folygon on YouTube, give it a goog, you'll find all my stuff there. Uh, I am also on the socials, uh, if you guys ever want to send me a tweet, then I can ignore it, uh, as I don't check Twitter all that often, uh, but I'm on it. Twitter, Instagram, all all the social media. Just Google Folygon and you'll you'll find all my stuff. Uh, but that is probably the best place. YouTube.com slash Folygon. You can find me and maybe ask a question. I check my YouTube comments pretty frequently. So if you ask a question there, I'll do my best to get to you. Pretty frequently. Yes, I do speak the English. Just getting these fingers a bit closer together. Which 
check it with perspective. Uh, you know what, I was kind of liking a little bit of that spread. Let's get a little bit more spread out here with the pinky. This is why it's important to look at those extreme angles, top down, bottom up, etc. Like so. You can see what that silhouette's looking like. So something like that. We're also going to shift this wrist. Quite a bit. Make a big change. Shift that weight forward. Ooh, look how dynamic. Little tweaks here at the end. Make sure we're getting these things in the right areas. I think our wrist is probably just a little too thick, which is a pretty simple correction. All right, I think that's all we'll do on this hand. Let's go ahead and move on to another one. Let me reassign those materials so they don't wig out on us later. <clears throat> so we could spend a bit more time on there, but like I said, that's you know a quick one hour hand. Nah, we could do more on the knuckles, more to clean up some of our edges, but moving on is important. All right, let's see here. Let's just re-import our spotlight and pick a new hand to work on. I'm kind of liking this bottom right one. That's looking pretty dynamic and cool. This one's kind of boring, this one's pretty similar, just has claws, this one's boring. These are all pretty much the same thing, except for the fist. This one's cool though, let's do this bottom right one. Again, uh, Johannes Helgeson, if you guys are looking for some cool references, that's who did this. Let's grab that paintbrush. Paintbrush. And erase all this stuff that we don't need. Make it a bit easier to see. Whoops. All right, so here is our new hand that we will be sculpting. Uh, I can maybe, oh, you know what? I'm feeling sneaky. Let's do a quick little undo, 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 undo. Do, 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 do. Right to, oh. Right there. Duplicate. Five hundred and twenty operations on that hand. Probably a little bit more because I did the, the fingers separately and those aren't included, but hey, who's counting? Alright, so what I wanted here is I wanted one of these fingers. <laughs> uh delete hidden, yes please. Reconstruct all those subdivision levels. Do a cage. Delete higher. There we go. We got a finger. All right. I'm going to cheat and use one of... And by cheat, I mean reuse something I already made. So not really quite cheating, maybe. But uh, maybe I'm being a little too hard on myself. <laughs> All right. Uh, grab a finger. Nail as well. Make sure that that fits. And now we can get started on our new hand. We'll be mostly starting that from scratch, but I will have a finger to cheat with. Let's do this. Let's duplicate our hand. And this is also, oh no wait, this is a right hand, not a left hand. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this hand, we're gonna run a mirror on it 
And then we are going to rotate it around. Ho ho, look at this. I'm a genius. <laughs> uh, we can reuse that palm now. Uh, there's definitely some shapes that are different. And we can work on that. Let's go ahead and delete all the stuff we do not need. So uh, I'm going to delete all the fingers. We'll just dynamesh to close holes. Now I could go back and get the palm before we attach the fingers, but that's fine. We're in a hurry. Uh, and then the thumb, I'll just redo the thumb. I don't want that in the way. All right, so this palm definitely needs a lot of tweaking and changing. So let's do a Z remesh on that to simplify the shape. Thank you for sharing a link to Johannes. I did that at the beginning of the stream, showed his art station. Appreciate you sharing it there again. Jimmy, no, I don't I don't have a lot of time for streaming or live streaming too much anymore, but I do upload on my YouTube channel quite frequently. Uh, would love to do a mentorship. Uh, current problem is currency. That is that is definitely a problem that I think a lot of people have right now. <laughs> um can't can I find a job in my 17 years? I don't know. I don't know exactly necessarily what that means. But I think with enough effort, yes. I can find a job. Absolutely, Jimmy. Glad to have you here, man. <coughs> it's been a while since I've talked quite this much. I don't do live streams too often anymore. Rough on the throat, that's why I grabbed the tea, ginger turmeric tonight. I'm a big tea fan, if there's any other tea drinkers out there. Ginger turmeric is my current jam, it has been for a while. I used to drink a lot of chai as well. Chai tea is so good. And I had like three or four at the time, different types of chai. All right, let's focus on silhouette. Get some of that curve, that beautiful curve going on. This uh, fat pad and shape, overall shape for the thumb there, much too drastic. I actually think this, uh, that was a little bit strange. This whole shape here is a bit too thick. So what we'll do is we'll just squash that down. <clears throat> Take a look. Let's rotate that so we're looking more at the camera. Definitely needing a bit more of a pullback here on the thumb. Check our position one more time. Actually, that's, yeah, that's quite a bit steeper of an angle. All right, and I will erase, like I said, most of this. Most of that is left over from our last hand. And we'll just kind of clean up this hand a little bit more. So it looks like these fingers, it looks like there's this nice sweeping form through this hand. You can see a little bit of that down here. All right, we're getting a little awkward in some of these shapes in the silhouette. 
going to spend 30 seconds here cleaning that up. Dynamesh resolution was a little bit too high there, making it hard to clean up some stuff. It's important that you only have as many polygons really as you need. It's easy to go overboard super quick. All right, now we got our finger here, finger nail as well, and we can start getting that into position. Hopefully this hand will go a little bit faster since we had a good general ish shape to start from with the palm. Let's get these two uh, middle slash ring fingers first. This is essentially creating one larger shape. This is really a really important thing to pay attention to in hands and it's something that uh, Johannes has done a really good job of with these concepts is that uh, finger grouping can make your pose for your hand <clears throat> quite a bit more appealing and also feel quite a bit more natural. <clears throat> do you typically work off of other people's concepts for personal projects? What do you look for in concepts when you are picking projects? Uh, it depends. Uh, my most recent character was uh, not off of any particular concept. I don't even have my art station pulled up. Uh, the Morgan from Darkstalkers. So this was not based off of any particular concept, but uh, like this one, for instance, this stylized troll was based off of a concept from uh, Chris Abels. Um, the more realistic ugly guy here was not though, that was just a translation from stylized to a bit more realistic. So it just kind of depends. Uh, a lot of my professional work is uh, taking a 2D concept. Uh, someone will come to me and say, hey, make this into 3D. Uh, and it's my job to translate that to 3D as accurately as possible. So uh, I tend to do that a lot with personal projects, but it just kind of depends on what I'm in the mood for. If I find a really cool concept. Uh, I think in terms of choosing a concept, <coughs> it's a bit of a multi-tiered answer. Um, find something that you like, I think is the most important thing uh, for personal work. I think it's important to create stuff that you like for your personal stuff. Uh, additionally, if it's a good idea, in my opinion, to have a specific goal in mind if you can. So for instance, let's say for a personal project, you want to get better at sculpting hands. Well, maybe it's not you know, a great idea to go about sculpting a full character because then you're probably only going to sculpt like one hand and then maybe pose that hand a couple times. So that's not like a ton of great practice, whereas instead maybe, you know, grab some concepts from Johannes Helgeson like I've done here and sculpt uh, a couple hands in a couple hours. Um, so that's that's also important. So find something that you like, maybe have a, a goal in mind with that. And then also uh, as you you know practice art more, you'll be able to kind of pick up on uh, why one concept is better than another or why, uh, why some shapes are better than other shapes. Uh, this is a lot of the stuff that I talk about in my uh, Appeal Academy course. Uh, there is objective ways to do this. Certain shapes are just more visually impressive than others. Sorry, bad shapes. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, those are the three things I would say to probably keep in the back of your head when choosing a personal project or a concept for a personal project. All right, so we've got our middle finger. Proportionally, looks a little long to me. Ooh, maybe not. Maybe I did good. Whoa. I'm gonna scale it down just a little. Uh, I've lost a lot of the wrap of my palm, unfortunately. I'm gonna try to get that back. You know what? Maybe it's a bit more flat there. Hmm. Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Let's do this. Let's do... If I can get a... I'm not going to be able to get a decent mask through there. That's okay. 
the uh, wrist needs to be a little bit smaller there. I'm gonna do a quick little remesh just so I can adjust that plane on a lower subdiv. Currently it's dynamesh. Whoa, why are you masked? Stop that. There we go. Uh, teaching 3DS Max and ZBrush. Awesome, congrats, man. Uh, Belarus, do I know your president? Is freelance. Oh, are you tr <laughs> are you trying to spell freelance? Um, I do not. I do not know your president. Unless that is a unique way that your company's name is spelled. F R I L A N S E. I believe you're trying to spell freelance though. But hey, good luck on the freelancing if that is the actual case. How would you tackle mittens a lot more easily than fingers? <laughs> uh, the same exact way that I'm doing it here though. Focus on the, uh, the larger primary shape first and then slowly work your way into the secondary and then details. Dogs are going crazy. Sorry for the loud noise in the background. Where would you start with somebody completely new to ZBrush after you give them some basic tool knowledge? Uh, I would do, uh, go to my Twitter. We'll do it real quick. Um, actually, uh, it's gonna take too long to pull up. Go to my Twitter and I have a assignment that I posted on there. It is uh, an assignment meant to get up your mileage, your quantity up as quick as possible. Uh, that is the most important thing when starting sculpting uh, because honestly, there's just so much that you do not know. Uh, it's really hard to even critique people that are completely new to sculpting uh, because there's just such a ridiculously large amount of things that are incorrect and getting to a point where you can start actually applying a lot of that information takes some time. So getting that mileage up, most important thing. You can do that by checking out my assignment that I posted on Twitter. Uh, just go to my Twitter, click on the media tab and scroll down for like 30 seconds and you'll find it. It's just a screenshot of a Word doc or something like that. All right, so I wanted to get a bit more curve here. Take this finger, we'll duplicate it, slide her on down. This is going to be the ring finger. And it's a little higher up, or better yet, a little rotated, maybe. But these this shape is supposed to be, you know, one larger combined shape. So that is important, that that is the focus there. And duplicate that again, slide down and focus on creating our pinky. I'm going to slide those fingers in quite a bit here. And then for the pinky, a scale down, and then a rotation first here. Oh no, I did have that. I did have that correct. I was like, where's my other joint? <laughs> I, uh, I did have that correct. I'll redo that here in a sec. Let me, what did I do here? Why didn't that material take? You know what? I've just, I've just confuzzled myself. Sculpted what I see and not what I know. That's okay. Uh, we'll do a bend there, and then I'll just do like a slide back. And 
then I'll do another bend right here. Do a quick bevel. How are we doing on time? All right, we are good. We got like 45 minutes. That should be, I believe that's correct. Yes. Uh, so that should be enough time for us to finish this hand here. Maybe do some specific questions at the end. If we have any. All right, so we'll roughly get that into place. These other fingers are going to be fine. And then that last finger a bit more pointed down. And I will make this just ever so slightly shorter. Let's check our rotation. It's uh, pretty straight. And let me slide that back. And then I'll do the same thing here. Create an extra little joint. Same technique with the bevel. All right, I'll adjust that here in a moment. Let's take a look at this from a couple other angles. We are going to take this index finger, relax it out this direction. We're also going to make our palm more skinny. Let's combine these two fingers into one group. And our pinky. We will also rotate out. So something a bit like that. Increase the size of our pinky just a little bit. All right, so our palm, much too wide. Shouldn't be too hard for us to fix, though. Let's start just a little bit of taper in. And we can spread these out just a little. For the most part, I want that to be a singular, kind of grouped up shape there. Let's get our thumb, finally. For that, I'll just duplicate one of my fingers and repurpose that. Do you have to do retopology for 3D printing? No, you do not but it is helpful to lower the poly count through decimation so that the object can process faster from your slicer. But there are many things that you do have to do to your geometry for 3D printing. Alrighty, let's get this into our Correct position here. Okay. Change that angle. And now you can see that huge gap that we have. So telling us that we need to shift that volume up quite a bit. It looks like uh, that thumb is rotated a bit more. feels a bit closer to me. Let me get that rotation here correct. That'll help a lot. And then fix our nail real quick. We'll have to slide this volume up quite a bit here. Let's 
check that out. Let's move our light. Help us see a bit more. I think we're seeing a bit more of a uh, tilt here on the underside of the hand, which is fine. I started to do a little bit of that. I think we could stand to get a little more though. Our thumb is going to need to be a bit more stocky too. Uh, so, we're close, we're close there. The angle and shape of our thumb. Yeah, we just need a little bit more of that, that natural curve that we can see. I don't know if your guys is, if, if, if you guys have like a hitchhiker thumb like I do, one that bends backwards. You can see that thumb doing that a little bit there. And then uh, get a nice little curve on the way back here as well. Which creates a really nice silhouette. Very beautiful. Well done, Johannes. Um, a whole hand of middle fingers. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, just pulled up the assignment sheet. Yes. Yes, focus on smaller parts of larger things. I see a lot of people open up ZBrush for the first time and say, I am going to sculpt an entire character and they end up getting really disappointed really quickly. And that is unfortunate because you want them to continue and actually get to a point where you can sculpt an entire character. It's just that you can't do that right away uh, without probably getting a little upset and discouraged. So that assignment specifically is meant to get up that hour count really quick, but also, you know, help you to work on something that's a bit more achievable. Yes, creating some nice shapes through there. This thumb feels a bit long to me, personally. I think we'll make it shorter. And then I'll just blend the rest of that in. All right, let's combine up some fingers, some middle fingers. Every finger is a middle finger if you try hard enough. That's the lesson here, folks. Okay, so as I mentioned, these two fingers will be one shape, but I don't necessarily want them to merge together. So I will separate them like so initially, and then after I merge, I'll remesh and then pull them a little closer. Uh, taking a look at my palm, still a little too wide out here. We want that to blend in nicely with the edge of the hand. You can see straight line. We don't have that extra hump. Same thing there with the index. And honestly, this volume can come out quite a bit more. Let me see. Whoops. Fix a couple angles there with the thumb. And all right, let's go ahead and merge that together. And we will adjust all of this here shortly after we get things combined up. All right, so for that, we're just gonna run a Dynamesh at around 300 or so. It's probably enough resolution. Just making sure my knuckles are looking okay here. 
my Sonic and Knuckles. Just gonna depress this area here a little. I can see those knuckles a little bit more. All right, let's Dynamesh. Like I said, around 300, that looks like it's plenty. Plenty enough res. All right, same as last time. Some blending, and then some work to kind of replane out those shapes where necessary. some of those plane changes. And it's okay to keep this rough, you know, messy for a little bit. You can always clean it up later. Probably get a bit more separative area here. All right, uh, so now I think I'll probably just remesh without polygroups just like I did on the last hand. But if you want some cleaner edge loops, I would definitely recommend taking the time to do that. All right, let's do that real quick here. And I'll just do maybe like 5k or so with a lot of longer connective areas like fingers or if you're remeshing a body and it's got a, you know, a bunch of limbs, as it should, <laughs> uh, then you're going to need a little bit more topology there for sure. How do you make that line to differentiate the planes of the hand, like going from the wrist to the top of the hand? Uh, you can use a combination of pinch brushes and trim brushes to achieve that result. That is what I like to use to plane out shapes. There is a default pinch brush in ZBrush that works great. I like it a lot. I use a modified version of that as well as mech cut brushes to achieve similar results. As well as uh, if you're looking for trim brushes that are really nice, just default brushes, the Trim Dynamic and the H Polish brushes are probably your best bet. So you'd come through, do a little pinch like so, and then trim it off on both sides. Here's, here's the same idea here, pinch, trim off on both sides. Really quick and simple process. I like mech cut brushes a lot too though. There's some really good ones out there. I'm using a custom one right now. Clean this up a little more. Ooh, I kind of uh, got that finger a little nasty. That's okay. I'll look at the fingers here in just a moment. Some of these knuckles need to shift back quite a bit. Whew, that thumb needs some help too. <clears throat> uh, yes, Dimitri, that could also be a great way to, uh, to practice doing a body part a day, but I mean, honestly, you know, sculpt what you want, so it doesn't have to always be a body part. It could just be something from life or some cool artwork that you find. In the beginning, the fact that you are practicing is what is important, getting that hour count up.
Finally, we love you. Well, thank you, man. Love you, too. Appreciate you coming and hanging out for a while here while we do some sculpting. Alright, let's look at this from a couple new angles. Got some lanky fingies, as we call them in the biz. I kind of like to make these connective areas a bit sharper on the bottom. You have a bit of a crease down there, especially when you're bending your finger though. I have a bit of a shelf right there just from where it's connected to the hand. We could take some time to clean that up. It's not very hard to fix and clean up. We'll just take some time. Alright, let's clean up these fingers now. So if we look at the uh, silhouette there for that shape, these are a bit flatter. And actually the tip of the finger is a bit more curved. So I'll try to get that in. I'm also just uh, in general kind of squaring off this shape a little bit more on that top plane. You get a sharper edge on the sides. A bit more rounded on the bottom, as I mentioned with the last hand, creates a nice contrast. And same thing here on the index finger, which is great. There's some consistency in form. That's what we like to see. All right. And then for the fingertips. I'm going to curve these initially and then put a little more volume on the bottom. They're a bit too thin. They're a bit more thin in our last hand. Also, I guess we could. Wow, that was a horrible selection. Goodness, there we go. Put our other hand up here or somewhere. We'll just throw it under here. Drop that on the canvas. And back to our fingers. So that was the hand that we sculpted in our first hour. This is our second hour hand. And... We're getting there. We're pretty close to being done with this. We can also throw some poly paint on this really quick, like what we did with the other hand. Uh, maybe with our last bit of time, if nobody has any questions or anything like that, we can uh, instead just spend some time going back and refining that first hand a little bit more, cleaning it up. Or even do that on this hand. We shall see how much time we have left. All right, sharper uh, knuckle point there, just a little bit. Let me use move back face here, flatten this out. The trim brush was not getting quite the amount of flatness that I wanted. Let's see, let's turn those nails back on and now thicken up the bottom of these fingers using move back face masking again. And you could do this with something like an inflate brush. I don't actually like inflate uh, very much and I don't use it for this kind of thing. I'll use it in very specific instances, but I find that you can get a lot more control out of a move brush with back face masking. You can define the specific 
uh, direction you want to inflate that object. Give this thumb a bit more volume right there. It's a bit closer. All right, and now all that's left to do there is readjust our fingernails. Get them back into position. George, welcome. What's going on? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Hope you guys are doing well, too. <laughs> Sounds like Hannibal Lecter doing a body part a day, right? <laughs> Make it make it the thing from the Adams family. It absolutely could. I mean, it's just a hand, but now it's much more than that. It's its own character. We could just put some googly eyes on him. Wait, I thought no, that's cousin it. Cousin it is the hairy furball thing. The thing is, isn't the thing like their butler or something? I believe that's correct. It's been a while since I've seen the Adams family. Alright. A little bit more. Almost done with the fingernail positions. Alright, let's do uh, some quick polypane on this guy now. Noticing a couple areas more that could use some cleanup and refinement, but let's put that on hold. So when I polypaint, I just fill in a quick base color, then I grab uh, a just an RGB paintbrush, really low RGB value, and start filling in a lot of that color. So in this case, I'm going to initially probably hand paint these shadows a little bit more than we need. I'll tone it down though. And we'll probably keep this about as rough as we did with the last one. Honestly, it's not that hard to go back and refine this even more. All right, and then we did a bit of that darker reddish around the knuckles. That's right, only two knuckles on the middle finger and the ring finger. Oh boy. Just sliding some knuckles around a little bit. Really, you can't see much of that second knuckle anyway, but we might as well. Right, we're here. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy. I will just sample the same color from the fingernails that I did for the other hand. 
Uh oh. A little too thin. A couple of these. Uh, hey, Velagon, do you also make uh, realistic characters? I do from time to time. You can check my art station for a recent, uh, or my YouTube channel, for a recent sculpt that I did of a stylized troll character that I converted to a more realistic version. Uh, most of the work that I do is for stylized stuff, so uh, that's kind of my niche and what I've fallen into. That's more of what I do from uh, day to day. Yes, Johannes Helgeson has some very cool designs. I agree. All right, so uh, I think a little too heavy handed with shadows on the bottom. It definitely gets the uh, idea across there, but I would like to keep this a bit more neutral. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just grab a color from my hand that I already have. Fill that in. Go for something a bit more. One of our neutral colors up there. And let's go a bit more warmer. Let's go real warm here. Very low res. Let's see. I'll show you guys a little trick to help neutralize some of your overdone clown paint as well. You start getting a little too much stuff going on. All right. So something you can do is just sample a neutral kind of base uh, color here, and then uh, set your RGB value very low. If you set it to 100 and click on fill object, it'll fill that in as a solid color. If you do it as something like 25, it'll fill that in at 25% uh, opacity. So clicking that once, you can kind of see the difference there. Very subtle, but uh, you can start kind of using that to your advantage. You could maybe click that a couple times. I kind of want the... Uh, the color variation in there it starts getting rid of some of that pretty quick. That is one technique though that you can utilize to uh, help neutralize some of your color a little bit, bring it back, back to home. All right, so we have two hands now. Let me load up our spotlight image one more time. I'll clear the canvas. And I think my material got a little messed up on that first hand. I'm not sure why or how. But to go back to that first hand, we can see how that's looking. I will fix some of the poly paint on this hand to give it a little bit more neutral. So we'll do that really quick. And then we can answer some questions or uh, refine a little bit more on these hands. We have about 20 minutes left. So uh, we'll do that here in just a moment. Hello from Russia, welcome. Uh, in your opinion, is it important to do both realistic and stylized or just one? That depends completely on what you want to do. I recommend you be specific with your focus. Uh, a lot of people um, like to do realistic stuff. I personally uh, enjoy doing stylized work a lot more. Um, yeah, so find out what you like. Uh, I, if you're asking that question, that says to me that you just need to do it a little bit more to find out you know, what your thing is. Uh, and after, I think, sculpting quite a bit more, you'll, you'll start to figure out what you enjoy working on more, whether that be stylized or realistic. Uh, depending on what type of job you're trying to get, uh, that could also help answer that question for you. Gimme, gimme, neutral color. That's too bright. That's much better. Let's 
So as I pointed out earlier, it's very easy to overpaint shadows, which I, I kind of did it just really quick on here. Somebody was asking about poly paint. I wasn't planning on painting these up. It's a bit of an awkward transition into our pinky, isn't it? As well as our knuckle, which uh, needs to shift in quite a bit, doesn't it? We don't need to spend a ton of time refining these. I would personally uh, prefer to focus on uh, some questions here. So give me 30 more seconds on paint. And if you guys have any questions, throw them in chat now. fall in the realistic category and I'm quite stuck and unproductive lately would change a bit be helpful would change be helpful hmm well I don't know if it would or wouldn't typically uh, I sculpt because I like to sculpt and I want to sculpt and I enjoy doing it. Uh, so if you are feeling stuck, like you don't know exactly what you want to do, uh, or what? Oh, I was so confused there. Uh, what I, <laughs> I, had, I thought I had solo mode on. Uh, what I recommend is, you know, may, may, maybe you do try switching it up. I, I'm very bad at answering questions about motivation. I think motivation at the end of the day is just what you want to do. So if you want to sculpt, you're going to sculpt. If you don't, you're not going to. I mean, I really think it's that simple. I don't think there's any, uh, you know, magic about it or, or secrets. Um, I think that's really all it comes down to. Uh, but if you don't want to do it, uh, don't do it, you know? Spend your time where you want to. I don't think there's any reason uh, to, you know, waste time doing stuff that you don't want to do. Uh, but in terms of doing the hard stuff, like practice, to get better at sculpting, I think you have to want that end goal uh, a lot more than how painful some of that hard practice can be. So, um, gotta ask yourself a lot of the time, is it worth it? And in my opinion, yes, I think it is worth it. It just takes time. It takes time and patience. So many cool shapes in these hands. I really enjoyed working on these tonight with you guys. Um, what happened with the Obi Wan, the Ben Kenobi beard look? Uh, yeah, the beard, the beard is is gone. Uh, the beard existed because shaving was uh, not not a lot of fun. Uh, but it turns out having a beard is also not a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, when you're making these, you've been moving really easily around different polygroups, selections, meshes. I often struggle with getting what I want selected or polygrouped and navigating through those. Aside from more time working with the tools, any tips? Nope, not really. <laughs> uh, it, it, this software is not the easiest software in the world to use, and it takes a long time to get comfortable with it. And I, I do honestly mean that because I did a talk at Fullerton University uh, in November, yes, the first week of November last year, and I couldn't get my custom UI for ZBrush to load, and I was, here, let me do a quick save, I was stuck using the default user interface, and there were, there's a lot of things like this pop-up menu, you know, like this right-click pop-up menu. Just lots of little tiny things that really made it hard for me to work in ZBrush just because I'm so used to using my custom user interface. I didn't have any custom hotkeys. Those are still loaded in uh, right now for me uh, because that doesn't reset on config. But um, it, was, it was just really hard to work with and making select, I, I was just so slow at working and it was really frustrating. Um, so I do recommend maybe customizing your user interface. Also, I have a great video. I do have one legitimate piece of advice. This, uh, this video is a great video. I made this video. Uh, 10 ways to fix the ZBrush user interface. Uh, essentially, this will make it a lot easier for you. I'm just gonna share this in chat for you. Uh, a lot easier for you to get up and running and working with ZBrush uh, every time you get in here in Sculpt and getting rid of a lot of those barriers that are frankly pretty frustrating to uh, deal with while you're working uh, and trying to just like let the software melt away and just you know work as a tool. Um, but other than that, uh, a lot of time, I mean, if, you, if you're not familiar with polygroups, I recommend getting acclimated with how to use those. There's lots of little things like transpose line 3D gizmo, you can control click and drag to create a mask, control W is the default hotkey to create a polygroup. You know, read the documentation, learn a lot of this stuff. There's a lot of little things like this um, that make this kind of stuff easier. In terms of using selection or masking brushes, definitely check out the Select Lasso and the Mask Lasso brush. These are my primary selection uh, tools. Uh, those are the ones that I use the most. Other than that, I also use the Slice Curve brush for slicing and creating new polygroups very quickly. An example of that, taking a hand like so, and if I wanted to create a slice right through here, Thought I had it selected. There we go, run a quick slice, and there we go, I have a new group selection between these two parts of the hand. And I can use that now to Z-remesh with keep groups and create a nice clean edge loop around that area. And can do that multiple times. I'll often actually cheat on low poly stuff. If you guys were here at the beginning of the stream, you saw me do this, but if not, I'll do it again right now. So here, uh, actually here, I'll, uh, We'll do this real quick. So here I have this wrist, this low poly geometry. And let's say for instance, I wanna add in a new edge loop. You could use the Z modeler brush or you could just use a slice curve and just by slicing through it, you get a new edge loop all the way through that object. So that's another quick way to kind of work, create new poly groups, create new geometry, all sorts of good stuff. So there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot. Absolutely, happy to help. All right, we got about 10 minutes. Let me see if I missed anything here. A monster per week in a full character per month. That is interesting. I think in the beginning, getting that hour count up is super important. And uh, after you do that for a while, I definitely think you should start switching to uh, 
to larger scale full-time projects. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, it's a lot more encouraging, one, to have a nice cool full project completed. We'll get our hands both on here on screen at the same time so we can check them out. Uh, but also, uh, projects create a really great way for you to kind of level up your skill uh, and push past kind of your limits, plus ultra style, you know. Uh, so once you get to that point where you feel like you can't progress anymore on a project, what I recommend doing is taking a break from working on that project and then come back a little bit later with fresh eyes, new perspective, and uh, hopefully be able to push that uh, a little bit further. Beautiful, beautiful hands. Yes, always. <laughs> awesome. Well, that is going to be the end of our stream, guys. Thank you again so much for coming and hanging out with me while we sculpted some hands here on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel. Give them a follow if you haven't already. And if you guys want to check out more of my stuff, my name is Ben. I go by Polygon around here. You can check me out on YouTube just by giving a Google for Polygon. You should find the rest of my stuff, like all my socials, etc. If you guys are interested in grabbing some of my brushes, uh, you can do that on gumroad.com slash Polygon. I will share a quick link in chat for you guys there. Thank you so much again for hanging out and seeing everybody. Same thank you. Appreciate y'all. Uh, brushes, materials, etc. on there. Of course, my Appeal Academy course, a course and a mentorship all rolled into one. How fancy, how cool it is. Check it out. I have an art station. You guys want to check out some of my art? I make art, if you didn't know. It's cool. It's fun. It's great. All right. Uh, well, with that, you guys have a fantastic rest of your evening. All of you stay safe and healthy out there in these trying times. And uh, stick around because I believe there's going to be another stream here in about 30 minutes. I believe it's a ZBrush Masters stream. Uh, so stick around for that if that sounds like fun. I will try to stick around in chat and maybe say hi and maybe do a little talking if I can. Uh, but I need to grab some dinner. It's getting a little late here. So again, you guys have a great rest of your night. And I will hopefully see you again here soon on the ZBrush uh, Pixelogic channel or over on my YouTube channel. All right. Bye, guys.